see some familiar names and faces. So happy that y'all joined again. Um, so yeah, I, I want to get started just before it's kind of like the the pre intro if that if that makes sense. But thank you all so much, and you you know that this is part three of a three part series that we've done, and we started out talking about the fundamentals of DEI. And then from there, the second part, we discuss leveraging diversity days and special holidays to champion uh, inclusion and a celebration of diversity at your nonprofits. And so today we're gonna be diving deep. I know that's why we're all here to dive deep into how to leverage AI, artificial intelligence, for diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives at your nonprofit. So before we um, dive into this, I'm really excited to learn from you what you're excited to learn today. So if you can, take a second or two and put in the chat, what are you excited about for this webinar today? What are you looking forward to? What, what do you want to learn? What what myth do you want a uh, debunk? Uh, like, give it to me all. I, I want to hear from you. Why did you show up today? Feel free to put your response in chat, or you're more than welcome to come off mute. While we're waiting for you to do that, I'm just going to scroll to the housekeeping slide. They can just view it, and then you can continue with your presentation. Okay. And I can't see chat. Let me try to go back to my chat. Okay. Uh, to harness AI into BEI, obviously, yes. Thank you so much for that. Anyone else? Is anyone um, new to AI? Have you not used ChatGPT or any of these tools? Oh, I'm loving this. Someone says, um, looking to improve our DEI. Um, also showed up to this event. I want to learn more about AI and nonprofit businesses. Awesome. And someone um, says, would like to learn how everyone is using AI. Absolutely. Because again, this is ED chat, not ED monologue. This is not Lashika just having a monologue with a bunch of content. Really hope that we can have a discussion so that we can learn from each other what other executive directors and what other nonprofit leaders are using um, to champion diversity, equity, and inclusion in their nonprofits, in their spaces. And a lot of our spaces are small. Some of us have small teams, um, smaller budgets, but we have shown over the last couple of webinars that it does not take a large team. It does not take a robust uh, budget to really impact change, right? We can start small. We can start where we are. And um, so again, thank you all so much. I'm still seeing all of your responses come through. Uh, once again, increased vendor DEI info using AI, awesome. Uh, Want to learn how to leverage AI for clients, excited about tools. This is really awesome. Uh, someone says, I'm still learning about Copilot. Me too. <laughs> I am too, I am too. Uh, so thank you all for doing that. Um, and so I just want to dive in for those of you who are new, um, to the EED chat. My name is Lashika Phillips, and I am the Director of Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture at TechSoup. And um, my job really does not, uh, you know, stem around uh, AI, but I enjoy using AI a lot. And so we thought it would be great to share how nonprofits can leverage AI uh, for DEI initiatives. And so before we move further, I want to point out something. We are approaching Juneteenth. And Juneteenth is a day that commemorates the emancipation of enslaved Black Americans and symbolizes the ongoing journey toward freedom and equality. And you may say, well, what does that have to do with our discussion today? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because in this session, you'll see that I'm going to be highlighting uh, contributions of two Black leaders in AI. Uh, showcasing their innovative approaches and the ways in which they have harnessed technology to drive positive change. So really excited to share all of that with you today. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Awesome. So really curious to know here, this will take maybe a couple of seconds for you. 
there should be a poll that popped up for you to answer this question. Does your organization uh, implement or have any um, DEI programs? Oh, and I see all of the poll questions are here. <laughs> well, we can go ahead and complete all of them now. Does your organization implement DEI programs and initiatives? And it can be small, it can be uh, informal, informal, it, it doesn't matter. We're just curious to know, um, are, are, do you have this, these initiatives in your, uh, in your space? And then are you interested in attending more webinars on this topic, whether it's about um, specifically DEI or DEI and AI? Would really love to know that because that helps us in developing future content. And then lastly, we have launched an online community of purpose called Equity and Inclusion. And we have it open. It's, it's an open space. And um, we'd be interested if folks are interested in joining that community to continue these conversations. So happy to see some of your responses come in. And if we can give folks a couple of seconds here, Aretha, that would be great. I see three people have answered. If we can get a little bit more feedback, that would be really great for us. We have um, 40 out of 53, so. Oh, awesome. Okay. I yeah, 75% participation. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Oh, this is this is really great. Thank you all for, for doing that. And so as we move forward, I want to, um, oh, I'm going to remove the, oh, I'm seeing the responses. Thank you, Aretha. Thank you. So it looks like, oh, wow. So it looks like more than half of folks attending here today do have DEI initiatives. Oh, that's that's really great. And the reason why I'm excited to hear that is because, um, you know, when I read various articles here lately, it's just interesting to see the um, the turn of DEI initiatives and efforts just across the sector and just across the country. So I'm really happy to see that there are still folks championing this. Um, and then, yeah, well, of course, sixty seven percent are interested. In these uh, in these topics, so this is great. We will bring more of this, more of these back, and I'm happy to see again more than half of you very interested in joining this community. So you'll have all of the information to to do that, and I'll share all of that um, at the end of this webinar. Thank you all so much for taking the time to do that. That really is valuable for us. Uh, we can move to the next slide, Aretha. Thank you, thank you so much. So so today. We're going to focus on AI tools, but specifically generative AI and how it can support and enhance your nonprofit's DEI initiatives. So first, we're going to look at how we're going to look at AI, what it is and how it intersects with DEI. And then we'll discuss how AI can both uh, perpetuate and mitigate biases. And then before our Q&A, we'll explore some practical AI applications that can be implemented in your nonprofit to advance and, and champion your DEI goals. And again, I have to emphasize, this is ED Chat. I do have a lot of content, but this is not a monologue. I really want to hear from you all the way that you have already been engaged in chat and answering the polls and even in the intro coming off and sharing about your nonprofit. That is what we want to do today. So this is a discussion with you. We want to learn from each other. So let's get started. And as you know, we've, well, we've done this disclaimer before, but I have to say it again. Um, while we are very passionate about technology here at TechSoup, please understand, I am not a legal advisor and neither is TechSoup. We are not HR, uh, HR advisors as well. Um, and this is not legal advice. So when starting your own DEI journey and even working with uh, artificial intelligence, it's very important to seek the advice uh, and counsel of um, experts. So this is all intended to give you information, inspiration, and equip you to get started and continue on your journey. Uh, next slide, please. So, and, and yes, this will um, be shared um, later today. So you will have a recording of this video along with a copy of the slide. 
or all of this information is already hyperlinked for you. So it is a lot of it is a lot of information, but we're going to get through it together. So let's first look at understanding AI. Uh, anyone, anyone, please put in the chat really quick. How do you define AI? How would you define artificial intelligence? As you're putting those in the chat, I'm going to um, just share some brief information about artificial intelligence and the fact that it involves programming machines to exhibit human-like thinking and learning and decision-making capabilities. And so AI, it imitates human behavior and it can be programmed to perform tasks that humans can complete, right? So AI is also a transformative tool that executive directors and other nonprofit leaders as yourself can leverage to enhance their roles, um, drive the mission forward and maximize their impact. Some key terms that every leader should be aware of, especially right now in this so advanced in digital world and space that we're in, every leader should understand generative AI and what that is. And so generative AI is a technology that can create new content such as text, images, um, video, music based on program data. And prompt engineering is the process of optimizing prompts or questions or queries to um, for specific outputs with the generative AI. Now, some uh, examples of generative AI tools that you may be familiar with, ChatGPT, show, show of hands, or you can put a one in the chat. Are you familiar with ChatGPT? Let me get to the chat. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> exactly what I expected. <laughs> exactly what I expected. One's all over the place. There is a note. That's fine. When you are in the right place, you are in the right place. Oh, I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving this engagement. So ChatGPT, um, this is a powerful AI model created by OpenAI, and it is known for its ability to understand and generate compelling content. Um, it's widely used in various applications, and it continues to push the boundaries of artificial intelligence. So recently, um, OpenAI Open released ChatGPT 4.0. Um, does anybody know what the O is? And it's been interesting to hear people say 4.0, but I'm here to let you know that O is not, it's not a zero. It's the, oh, someone put it in the chat. Mary, I think it's Mariella. Oh, awesome. O stands for Omni, absolutely. Which, what that means is that it is integrating like multi-model cap capabilities, which allows it to process and generate um, not just text, but as I said before, images, audio, video. And then last week, OpenAI announced ChatGPT for nonprofits. Did you all know about that? Well, all of that is linked here in this slide that you will have, and you can dive deeper into that so you can have all of the information about what they have laid out for nonprofits. Really fascinating stuff. Now let's look at Copilot. Now Copilot, this is a specific application built using ChatGPT, okay? So just to be clear there. So Microsoft, what they did is they integrated ChatGPT4 into their power suite, like uh, Word, Excel, um, and they named it Copilot. So when you use Copilot, you're actually using the same underlying AI technology as ChatGPT. It's just um, tailored or customized for Microsoft tools. Again, all of that is linked here in this slide for you to review later, to dive deeper in that. Another tool, Gemini. This is just another example. This is Google Gemini, to be clear, yeah, formerly known as BARD. Uh, but this is another example of AI that might have different capabilities or be used in different contexts. So it's important to understand that while different AI applications might have unique features, many of them are built on similar underlying technologies. And again, I've linked all of these great resources. Um, specifically, there is um, resources for nonprofits used in Gemini. And again, it, you already know it is linked here in this slide for you 
to dive deeper on later. So we've talked about these tools, but it's also important to make sure that you have resources to get started and have a plan for implementation. So with that in mind, I encourage you to check out the link shared here um, for the digital skills guide. So what this is, it's a curated list of resources, including videos and other uh, tool, tools and resources. And additionally, it's also essential to ensure that these tools are used ethically and responsibly. And we'll get into that a little bit, but to help with this, we recommend implementing an AI usage policy. That is gonna be crucial for your organization and how folks in your organization are using AI. So an AI usage policy, or also could be called an AI acceptable use policy, it helps guide the ethical use of AI in your nonprofit. Okay, it can ensure compliance with legal standards, protects data, prevents bias, really uh, great for nonprofits to have access to. So again, that is linked here for you. You're happy to download it. You're even also free to make it your own, right? Use it as a template for your organization. TechSoup has already done the hard work. So you can use that again and make it, make it your own. So before we move on, I'm, I wanna hear from you. What other AI terms or tools should nonprofits know about or what are you all using? Are you familiar with Otter AI? I know as people were coming in, people were talking about that they use a um, Zoom component or a companion, an AI companion to give them summaries you know, uh, at the end of meetings. I'm familiar with an AI tool um, that works really well with Zoom called Fathom. Oh, I just saw Alexandra put it in chat. Yes, Grammarly Assistant. Yes, Otter AI is awesome as well. Now, are, is anyone using AI for fundraising? Any fundraising AI tools that you all are aware of are using? I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing Copilot, awesome. Adobe has an AI tool, awesome. Electo AI, but it's still in beta. Awesome, I'm loving this. So please keep putting those in the chat because this is gonna be helpful for all of us. We'll be able to go back and say, hmm, I don't think that I'm familiar with that one. And you can take some time and do your own investigation there. Um, we can go to the next slide. Okay, we can go uh, one more. Um, <clears throat> so the intersection of artificial intelligence and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, this is very uh, fascinating and interesting to me. And I hope that you all will find it fascinating and interesting as well. So AI and DEI, they intersect by shaping each other, right? And impacting how nonprofits achieve their missions and guiding the development and use of AI technologies. And by understanding and leveraging the intersectionality of AI and DEI, really believe that nonprofit leaders can create more inclusive, um, equitable, and effective organizations and teams. This intersection allows for a, a nuanced approach that not only uses AI as a tool, but integrates it into the core DEI strategy to drive meaningful change. So let's look at some specific areas where this intersection is most evident. So bias and algorithms. So AI systems are trained by humans. Okay, we can all, they're trained by humans on histor historical data that often contain biases. And these biases can be reflected and even amplified uh, by AI, which can impact business needs like hiring, a resource uh, allocation and how services are delivered or even where services are delivered. And so since, again, humans uh, are creating and training these systems, their inherent biases are being mirrored in the AI technologies. Therefore, it is essential to address these biases to ensure fairness in AI. And I'm gonna show you how we can 
um, address the biases in, in AI. We'll, we'll get to that. So when we look at ethical AI development, DEI principles really guide the ethical development and deployment of AI systems. Ethical AI uh, requires transparency, accountability, fairness, really, which are all the core tenets of DEI, right? <laughs> and as leaders, we must advocate for ethical AI practices that align with DEI values and align with our values, assuring that AI systems do not inadvertently harm marginalized communities. And I think a great example of ethical AI deployment here is Latimer AI. If you've not heard of Latimer AI, as you can already imagine, I've already linked it here in this slide for you to take a look at later. But Latimer AI I was created by John Passmore, and it is a generative AI model built to uh, more accurately reflect the experience, culture, and history of Black and Brown people. It's really, really fascinating. And what is also interesting here is that when um, Latimer was first launched, in the news, it started to become nicknamed the Black GPT. And John Passmore went, I mean, it was the article from him that said, like, there's no such thing. You're calling it Black GPT just further perpetuates and just further shows you know, the biases in AI, like there should not be a separate GPT. I absolutely love that. And because of the transparency and the work that they've done with the intentional data collection, uh, Latimer AI is the exclusive generative AI tool for a lot of museums and universities uh, in the country because of that intentionality. Another example that I wanna show here that it, it, it is linked here, on the right side, you'll see on this slide, there's the that's the cover art for the documentary called Coded Bites. And the documentary, what it does is it investigates bias and algorithms that there's a Dr. Joy, an MIT researcher, revealed, and she uncovered all of these flaws in facial recognition technology. Um, a really great documentary, I, it is available on Netflix and other platforms, but um, I also learned that you can screen it at your nonprofit. Um, we had a screening at TechSoup actually twice. <laughs> we watched it twice as a group. Uh, really great information there. But again, all of this is linked for you to uh, explore uh, later. So you remember I told you that we will um, look at how we can kind of correct, kind of course correct, uh, bias in AI. Well, let's go to the next slide so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So this slide here, this is um, real life, true scenario, and was working with a nonprofit and they wanted to have images of um, AI and robots specifically that reflect um, African-American experience. So we went to ChatGPT. And if you didn't know, um, ChatGPT now does generate images, really, really great images. So I went to ChatGPT and um, the prompt was to generate an African-American inspired robot. You can see that um, they're listed at the top of the slide. So the first image was generated. And so if you look at the image, um, if you're familiar with um, an African um, kente cloth, right? You can see that there's some similarities uh, in that first image. And so I followed up and I just said um, that this image is more African and the request is for African-American. So it generated the second image. Well, the second image, I responded, and I mentioned that this could be interpreted as stereotypical. And I'm curious from anyone in the chat, anyone, do you know why I would have, why I said that? Does anything stand out to anyone here looking at the second image? 
me go to chat. So the second image, does that seem problematic to anyone? Well, it did to me. And specifically, it was the, what appears to be gold chain. Yes, Dan, the baseball cap. Um, also, the headphones. That seemed interesting to me. And so I responded to ChatGPT. And, um, well, I'm sorry, once I gave that response that I believe this could be, uh, be, be viewed as stereotypical, it turned around and it thanked me for my feedback and then generated what it said. And that is verbatim what ChatGPT um, re resulted back to me is that this was an African-American inspired robot reflecting elements of African-American culture and heritage. And so we settled on the last one. Um, we thought that that really reflected um, what the nonprofit was looking for. But I just want to pause here to see how we can combat inherent bias in, in AI and in generative AI, because it is built to be conversational, we can do exactly what I've just demonstrated here. So if you're using tools and you get information that appears uh, problematic, that appears biased or stereotypical, all of that, you have the, the right, <laughs> right? Please do that to respond back. Because that is how data and information can get gets corrected, okay? So thank you all for um, looking at this with me and putting your feedback uh, there in chat. <clears throat> we can go to the, the next slide. Quick question here. So in what ways, because I saw someone in chat, uh, I saw something about me, Journey. I can go back to chat in a moment. But in what ways can the ability to generate specific images enhance your work, enhance your DEI initiatives? Anybody, feel free to, to come, come off mute. Does anybody have any, um, any examples or ways that being able to create images could really help? I know some organizations have a hard time finding great stock image, images that are not that don't look stock, <laughs> like don't look like stock images, right? This could be a great way to get um, representation, you know, in images. Oh, someone said promotional material. Absolutely. Representing all people in the organization. Absolutely. Representation. Um, I think it helps to create images, feedback, learning models. Yes. Impact. All of these things. All of you are correct. The show focus on inclusion. Absolutely, because there may be a message that you want to convey, and there is not a stock image for that. But with prompt engineering, you are able to get the image that you want or really, really close to it, right? Um, someone says, would we be getting into any issues with copyright? Uh, I'm going to say no, but... Um, so I'm not an expert on AI copyright issues. That'll be something that we can dive in uh, another time. Thank you so much for that question. Um, understanding the audience and inclusion is necessary. Oh, I, Beverly says, ChatGPT does not spell words correctly, how to correct. Uh, that's a, I would love to do a webinar on, on that. But really quickly, Beverly, Canva has an AI component. So what you do is you take your generated image from ChatGPT or any other AI, and then you go to Canva and use Canva's AI to tweak that image. I'll give you an example. So if you have created an image on GPT and the words are not right or they're misspelled, you know, you can go to AI, the Canva AI component or companion, and then you can, they have a, a tool called grab text. So you're able to actually grab the text from the image that was generated from GPT and either remove it or change it, make it your own. So I didn't know I was going into that today, but again, another webinar that I would love to do uh, another time along with the copyright. So thank you all for that. Uh, next slide. 
So uh, this here is, I know it's a lot of information here on the screen, right? And I really do believe that all of these practical AI applications that you see, I mean, you can do uh, trend analysis um, with other tools, right? These are just examples of some optimized ways, right, to use some of these tools. And so here, I want to point out a few things on this slide. So for ChatGPT, what is linked here, because again, if you see here, yes, you can do, um, ChatGPT can help uh, enhance your email, social media content, all of, this, all of these things that we have listed here. But the key to creating impactful results and impactful content is going to be prompt engineering. So because of that, what I have linked here, I've linked a very great guide. I'm, call I'm calling it great uh, because it is what I call the impact principle, the impact framework for prompt engineering. So I created this about, I don't know, March last year, I believe it was, because I was preparing for a webinar to teach nonprofits how to use prompt engineering for impactful results. And I, I'm, I am a fanatic of acronyms. I absolutely love acronyms. If you ever work with me, I will make an acronym out of anything. <laughs> and so it was acronyms just stick. And so I thought how I need an acronym for impactful prompts, what can that look like? So I just went to ChatGPT and it took me about two days, you know, just going back and forth to get this right and generated the impact framework. And so the with the impact framework, what it allows you to do is allows you to focus on what I call the six pillars of effective prompts. So it's intention, it's message or metrics, purpose, action, clarity, and time considerations. And again, all of that is linked here for you. And you can download the information. It is a, a guide that you can always refer back to, um, share it with your team to ensure that everyone is um, using this principle for, again, not just, uh, you want effective prompts because you want impactful results. Right now with Copilot, and I saw that some of you are using AI tools for fundraising. But did you know that you could use Copilot for fundraising? And so what I've linked here is a guide to do just that. And so all of this is a part of the TechSoup Digital Skills Center that we just pulled out for you for this. And then Gemini, for those of you who are working with Google Gemini, you should check out what's linked here because it is a nonprofit resource guide with even more prompt templates and use cases. Um, so just a lot of information to, to get you going and make sure that you're prepared, right? And not just you, this is so you can share with your team so that everyone is on the same page and are working together. So other ways to use generative AI especially for DEI initiatives, use it to brainstorm ideas and use it to brainstorm frameworks as I did for the impact framework. You can use it to generate plans for Juneteenth. Um, this is Pride Month or even Global Diversity Awareness Month in October. You can also use generative AI to create inclusive images. We showed you that, that actually celebrate diversity and inclusion. And, and, when it gets it wrong, please correct me, right? <laughs> so by integrating AI, we can enhance efficiency. We can, we are deepening an impact and we are fostering stronger community connections. So um, let's use it, right? And use it ethically um, and leverage technology to really drive meaningful, meaningful change. I am so excited um, to see what other questions, uh, uh, any insights and thoughts that you have. Um, let's let's go to the Q and A. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so 
that is the content that I wanted to share <laughs> with with you all. Um, I do have some some next steps and some recommendations for what to do after this, but I, this is where we get to have our conversation. So any questions, uh, comments, insights, did you have an aha moment? Um, really excited to hear from you. Aretha, is there anything in chat that I missed? Nothing in chat, but I just put in there, feel free to unmute yourself for questions or comments. Sure. Um, I actually put it in the chat too, but you know, I was also reading some of the non-practical applications uh, that would be good to avoid using AI so you're not actually wasting your time doing things that is not useful, if you have some examples of those things. Yeah, so I would say, so the first thing that comes to mind, you mean like those tasks that take a, a lot of time, but if you just use AI, you may get some time back? Not, no, actually to avoid using AI uh, and not use it because it's not a useful tool, but people are like, oh, well, let me try that. And it wouldn't be a useful tool. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I, I understand what, what you're asking. If So ways that, can you give me an example? Sure. I mean, let's say there are things that just doing it person to person would save you much more sense. Tasks that AI would be better okay. to avoid uh, versus uh, using it. Well, I would say uh, just to keep it simple, I would say I would start out with emails. I think that um, I think that with emails, I wouldn't I would not I don't recommend going to any generative AI and asking it to generate an email from scratch. Right. I think that I think that to me, that's a waste of time only because if you go to generative AI and ask it to generate um, an email from scratch, you're going to have to keep going back and forth, back and forth to get the right version or the right format, the right tone. So for that instance, I would say never use generative AI to generate original content, right? My suggestion is take the time outside of technology to get your thoughts together and then use AI to enhance what you said or to clean it up or to make it more empathetic. Like there's so many things that you can do once you have the original content as opposed to using it to generate original content. Um, did that speak to your your question and your point? Uh, so somewhat, yes. I mean, I I remember, and I don't know the specifics of it, but reading an article that was like went through a whole list of things that a nonprofit should not be using, specifically AI, because it actually you waste time. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to spin things where you would be actually going out there and doing it in 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 real life. Yeah. No. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's really good. I'm saying uh, in chat, is there a downside at all to using AI? Yes. Yes. There is. the The first thing that comes to mind is um, data protection, right? I think that that is something that stands out to me. Um, so with that. But that's that's why we have tools like AI usage policy, right? Um, because that kind of gives us some guardrails on how to use AI responsibly. So, so for me, that's the first thing that comes to mind when when I'm seeing about a downside. Oh, someone else asked the same question. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think with that, it to me, it it stands out the most. It stands out the most is about data protecting data. So you, what you want to do to avoid that is to not enter private, uh, personal data, um, IP information from your organization, any type of sensitive metrics or numbers like that should not, or names, client names, any personal identifying information should never be entered uh, into generative AI. Now, um, a hack to that is, let's say you have a spreadsheet and you know for certain that generative AI is going to be able to help you uh, summarize the report, pull out some, some key trends, 
And so what you want to do is before you put it in any generative AI model, you can take it and you can um, redact that information. And so you can go in and if you know that you have, uh, if you have your name in the document, you can go in into your original uh, data uh, set and go in and do like a control find, like find and replace and replace every instance of your name with I, I replace things with fruits because it's easier for me to find it in the document when I have to go back to it. But you can find your rhythm and find what works for you. So just be mindful of that. If you are using um, AI to help you with data analysis, just be sure that you're doing the due diligence ahead of time to ensure that you won't have issues with um, sharing personal and sensitive data. Okay. Let's see, I'm seeing another question. So because AI has conversations, and it does, <laughs> I started one uh, in the past where I pasted into several of my written documents, emails, uh, and again, I'm reading this from chat. Uh, I told it that this is my writing style, so help me write uh, such and such using my writing style. I go back to that conversation for emails and everything else I generate as a starter. That is awesome. So basically, it sounds like what Joshua is doing is he is training his model. <laughs> that is what he's doing. He's trained his model. That's really, really great. I also recommend if you if you find some, as you start working with the impact framework and you start exploring the digital, uh, our digital skills center, you're going to discover so many prompt templates. But what I encourage you to do is start your own prompt library. I know that was not a term that we covered. I know that it wasn't, but just go with me, right? When you find a prompt that works, put it in a separate spreadsheet so that you can go back to that. I know that it saves it for you, right? In, in, the, in the tool, whatever tool that you're using, you can go back and you can always see what prompts you used and what those results are. But I think it's really good practice to keep it separate because I remember in the beginning days of ChatGPT, I don't know if you all remember, but there were some days where your history, you couldn't see your history for days, right? And so to avoid any frustration or delay in deliverables, please start your own prompt library, which is just a list of prompts that have been working for you that you set aside your own prompt library um, so that you can refer to. And it's also good if you have a set prompt library for your team. If everybody is working on the same project you want to and they're using generative AI, you want to make sure that the tone is correct, that the format is correct. And the way that you ensure that is to make sure that everyone is using the same prompt. Again, if you have your prompt library, then everyone can go back and refer to that. Okay. Um, oh, I love this question. Where do you see it going over the next five years? Oh my goodness. Who asked that? David. Oh, David. I, I don't even know if my brain can actually fathom in the next five years because just in the past month, have you seen what they've done with Chat GPT? Like you can take your phone and just have a full-blown conversation with ChatGPT. And they're releasing it to be video as well. Uh, it's just, so in five years, David, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to grasp what's happening over the next couple of months, right? <laughs> so, so I'll circle back. I'll circle back to you <laughs> later for that. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. How do we improve AI learning in the next decade? Great question. The way that we do that, Samson, is doing what we're doing right now. Continuous learning. Um, it's also going to take uh, community learning as well. So the way that we're all learning, you know, individually, I think it's just as important that we take what we learn with the people who we're working with, right? That is really going to improve AI learning. Um, I think that also, um, yeah, just a sharing and exchange of information 
I, I think so, because I think that when we do that, it also, it demystifies it, right? It makes it, it makes it attainable, something that everybody can use and everybody can benefit from. Um, so I really do think that that's how we improve it um, within the next 10 years, the next next year even, you know? Uh, what jobs and nonprofit will be replaced by AI? That is such a great question. Um, I, I don't know that I have a, you know, a solid answer for that because in instances where I'm seeing that AI can technically replace a human, it's actually not best practice given the mission of nonprofits, right? So I think that when when thinking about um, back office, uh, maybe back office work could certainly be replaced by, by AI because we can see where even Copilot is able to automate things um, for you. And so I, I would focus on back end, but I don't, I can't imagine it. But again, I'm I'm still grasping, you know, around all of the advances that are just happening here lately. But I just imagine like some back end, back office um, roles and, and things can be replaced with AI. But I, I, sometimes I don't like to use the word replace because I recognize that while there is an AI, um, you know, that is working in the background, I believe that it's going to always require a human component, right? It's going to always, oh, someone said it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Someone said, exactly. Someone said AI cannot replace nonprofit because of the human contact. Couldn't have said it better. That was perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and then what roles and nonprofits will be created by AI. I just think it's exciting to think about what roles and nonprofits will be created by AI. I, what do you all think? Like this is <laughs> what do you all think? What what roles do you think will be created by AI? That's uh, just to think about that is is exciting. Um how would AI help improve nonprofit jobs? Mm, well, when I think about how AI can improve any job, um, training, it's a training model, right? So you know that you can go to generative AI and it can be your coach. So if you or someone in your team needs to be coached on something specific to nonprofit, it can do that for you. It can quiz you. It can take you through a series of questions and quizzes and content that can um, help you learn that skill. Um, so I think that jobs can be improved um, using AI in that way, you know, as a training model. I really do. <clears throat> so someone says, I imagine if AI really becomes integrated, a new job could be someone who oversees programs and repairs them. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, and you all are just coming through. I'm so sorry if I'm missing some of these, but I'm loving this. Keep it coming because here's the thing. If we're not able to answer all of these questions today, that gives us a reason to come back <laughs> to another one. Or you can join us on Quad where we are having these conversations and uh, posting about all of these things. Um, so let me hop back into chat. Okay. So since volunteer is about 8%, then AI will assist with identifying and training the management. It could. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, how nice would it be for AI to scour the fundraising activities or grants that would apply to your specific nonprofit? Mm. So folks are using generative AI for um, for grant writing, but I will say that because of the 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 rise and the just wide use of AI, I am seeing that some applications specifically say um, not to use generative AI in your responses. Has anyone seen that? when applying for a grant. Would love to see if anyone has um, has seen that. And I know, Aretha, you work a lot with uh, grant writing. Have you seen that or heard of that across the sector? 
I have not seen it yet. I've heard people say, what are the funders thinking when they when they see or believe we're using AI to write mm -hmm. our answers? But I mm -hmm. haven't seen the funders say that um, don't mm -hmm. use AI yet. Yeah, that, that's why I think it's, it's very important that regardless of what content you are using generative AI for, I highly recommend that you do the work first, right? You create that original content. There are some words that just because I've been using generative AI and specifically ChatGPT, uh, for a while, or oh, I'm saying for a while, it just came up <laughs> since, it, since it launched. It seems like oh, so long ago. Um, I have I have found that there are words that, regardless of what model I'm using, and when I say modeling GPT, there's like um other there are other um GPT models within ChatGPT within OpenAI, and regardless of what I use. There are a couple of words that always come up when I'm asking it to generate content. The word harness, the word delve, and the word unlock. Those are like three key words that they are just, they always come up with, with um, when I'm using ChatGPT. Um, and I've noticed that other people have said the same thing, right? So not only is it important that you do the due diligence and create your own original content first is just as important that when the content is generated, that you go in and make it your own, that you remove language that does not represent your organization or does not reflect your mission, right? Like that is just as important. How to know AI-driven content? Well, they are working on tools to detect um, content generated by, by AI. And some people, just because of, there is, um, some people can tell. <laughs> yeah, the colleges already have it. The college yeah. schools already have that detection. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah. But, but here's the thing. So some schools, uh, and I only know of um, two or three in California. So what they're doing is they don't prohibit students from using generative AI, but they changed their teaching model. So now students are not submitting papers anymore. And I'm speaking specifically to um, two or three schools in California. So students are not um, they don't have assignments to write a paper anymore. The assignment is to have a conversation with the teacher, right? So it's removing that whole element of, is this AI? Where did you get this content from? So now teachers, educators are moving to more conversational learning and, and ways of um, testing uh, students. I thought that was really interesting. Any other thoughts um, before we talk about recommended next steps, how you bring all of this together? Uh, someone says AI is not going away, so we have to, so we have to be found on accepting it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's definitely not going away, but I think that for those of us who are skeptical in using it, I think that what we can do is find something that find something that interests you. And it may be something small. It may be, um, you know, if you work at uh, an animal shelter, maybe it's just go to ChatGPT and have it to create a poem about your shelter. Just, just for fun, right? You may not do anything with it. It's just so you can see how it can work for you, you know? Um, so I, I think let's go to the, the next slide, Aretha. Thank you. Thank you. And again, you all, if something comes up, if you have additional thoughts or insights, please, please go ahead and put it in chat. I just want to go over a few things before we, um, before we head out again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just, 
so appreciate your engagement. I think that this is probably the most engaged of the three part series that that we've done, and that has just been super exciting um, for for me, and I know for TechSoup as well. We did. I told you from. I told you at the very beginning, we would be going over a lot of information, and we did. And if you are interested in any of these topics and want to dive deeper into how to use AI and how to leverage it for DEI, then I highly recommend that you spend some time in our digital skill center. Um, you'll find more AI skill building tools, more prompt templates, uh, so much uh, resources and information there. I also recommend that you continue this conversation with us in Quad, uh, and all of this information is linked there for you. And also, <laughs> if this wasn't enough, guess what? <laughs> Next week, there is a webinar on leveraging generative AI, okay? And again, all of this is linked here for you. I'm not leading that webinar, but it's uh, other fascinating experts that are leading it, that can give you even more information about leveraging generative AI. Um, so I want to hop back to chat to see if there were any other uh, questions or thoughts here. Uh, and then, oh, okay, I see someone says, when confronted with diminished budgets uh, and the need to do more, managers will jump on the AI bandwagon and won't realize what it can do or does horribly wrong until it's uh until it's damage has been done. You're absolutely right. Uh who said that? You're absolutely right, David. And so that's why it is so important to before you dive deep, especially making a um like an org wide thing or an org wide initiative to begin to use AI, it's always important to have a plan, right? And so that's why we have the the AI usage policy that you can use, make it your own, read over it, um, you know, adopt that, implement that in your nonprofit, the, again, the digital skill, skill center, and then have a plan, right? Have a plan of how you want to roll it out. But like I said, start with something that you can work on, work on now. Think, think simple. If you've never done this before, think simple. Like, like I said, it's, is your organization planning something for Pride this month or Juneteenth? You can use generative AI to help you get ideas, to come up with the name for an event, to help you with the plans, right? It really can do those things for you. So think about where there is a need and how you can use generative AI to help with that need, right? Or to enhance something that you're already creating, right? So... Thank you all. Oh, do you have the link to you? Oh, thank you. And then Aretha is on it. <laughs> thank you all so very much. Like I said, you will get this recording along with the slides uh, and all of the resources there. I hope to see you all in quad. And until next time, have fun, learn something and share it with somebody. Find you a co-conspirator <laughs> and work together. So with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and we'll see you soon.